Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to the biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And this autumn, The Illusionist is on the road. It's a show featuring some of the world's best magicians and illusionists and escapologists. And Andrew Basso is one of them. Hello, Andrew. Hello, buongiorno. Oh, nice to see you. So there you are with your lovely German accent. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> you're Italian, you're escapologist, a man of illusion, and you've got the look, haven't you? There's a certain look you have to have if you want to be a magician. Yes, I think so. Actually, uh, magicians and illusionists are known for their skills. Better if they look good, I mean, uh, as any other um, business, uh, show business job, you know? I think there is a reality, isn't there? The the image and the way you put it across. Whenever I watch the talent shows, I always hear people like Howard Stern or Piers Morgan say, it can either look really cool or it can look really old-fashioned. Never the twain will meet. Yes, absolutely, I agree. And with you, I've been watching you online. I haven't seen you yet because you haven't done it yet. You're coming to the UK this autumn and I'm going to be seeing you in Nottingham, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I've been watching clips online. And again, there's a look about you of mystique. That's the first thing. Are you born with that? Is, is that sort of appeal to make me wonder what you're going to do next? Is that something you've learned or you were born with? I think um, I was born with because uh, I remember when I was a kid, I never dressed color uh, dress I was always in black um, I took something from my mother my mother looked like Morticia Adams oh, really an idea. <laughs> yes, really <laughs> so I think it was kind of a normal thing for me um, uh, many people maybe in the magic world try to uh, dress like somebody else but um, the, the final uh, good result is when you find really yourself and you're not imitating somebody, uh, you find your own personality. Uh, in the illusionists, uh, if you look at the poster, it's uh, quite not believable that everybody dressed like this in normal life. And um, obviously in the show, you push a little bit more your character to make more difference between each other. But um, everybody in the show, it's what he really is in, uh, in real life. I've always said the thing about magic is we know it's not real, we know it doesn't exist, we know it's a figment of our imagination, but what we love is to suspend disbelief and go on that journey with you and believe you're doing what you're doing, which is whether it's making uh, the Empire State Building disappear, whether it's making an elephant reappear, or whether it's getting out of a box. That There's something in us, isn't there, that we want to believe. And it's another reason why I hate these people who tell us how it's done, because that completely spoils it. We know it's not real. We just want to be able to guess and sort of in our own minds work out how did he do it? Well, I think the um, illusion uh, is not the final uh, result. I mean, it's the method. The, um, behind the illusion created, there, is, there are real skills. So uh, all the illusionists on stage spent all their life to practice and practice and practice uh, and to achieve some skills that nobody else is able to do. And specifically in my case, that I do escapology, uh, actually I really go in the water tank upside down and I really have to hold my breath for three or four minutes. And uh, to prove this, I removed all the covers and clouds that usually were covering any emulation of the Udini water tortoise cell. So making uh, my escape for the first time in history, a full view escape where I show my ability on lock picking uh, abilities and uh, physical endurance uh, and so on. I've watched so many magicians over the years. One of my favourite places to go for the last 15 years is Las Vegas. And the first shows I always aim for are the magic shows. There's a lovely show called the Variety Theatre where they do yeah. um, a lot of acts that actually are taking part in this tour and you get to see them close up. Um, one of the things that you just touched on there was that there aren't really that many tricks, are there? It's just how you do it. It seems whether you're making something disappear or reappear, it's how yeah. you do it. Whether you escape from the bottom of the ocean or you escape from a box, there's the yeah. same principle that apply it's just how you make it new and fun that must be an incredible pressure well it's like in music you know you have um, like uh, uh, the notes um, the sound notes uh, are just few but is the way how you put it together to create a unique song so it's the same with magic uh, principles are few but uh, 
this is the challenge to make something that nobody else in history has done it in the same way. I think in the past, it's fair to say David Copperfield was the first rock and roll magician, wasn't he? He yeah. was the first man that went into arenas and knocked people away with his incredible illusions. There's now Chris Angel, who's really doing um, a lot to, again, make it cool. He's coming back with a new series this year. Um, yeah. Magic does seem to still be omnipresent. It's something that, whether it's in the 70s, 80s, 90s or today, people still are interested in. And again, it's how you package it. Um, and it's great that you've taken the risk with this theatre show because it's a gamble to hire an arena it's a lot of money isn't it to, to do this um, and, and people are turning out they're still interested in magic yes the producers Simon Painter and Tim Lawson both coming from the um, productions of uh, very successful circus and musicals uh, they had a lot of courage when they started this project but at the same time I think they were um, watching carefully what the world was missing and actually was a great magic show. So they decided to create the best magic show, uh, taking the best material of the best performers and put it together in a unique show. And the result is we are packing arenas all over the world, uh, like Mexico City. We, we have done uh, in one week over uh, 40,000 tickets sold in a 9,000 theater. Uh, so the response is amazing. And I think uh, people today are missing a, a great magic show and this is the chance and again to bring together all of these guys in one room is so rare let's talk about some of them for a moment so we got uh, dan sperry he's yeah. the anti-conjurer what's an anti-conjurer then well it's the opposite of what you expect from a magician you know in the common idea the magician is the elegant guy that comes on stage with the hat yeah. or and um, doing the same tricks over and over from the linking Chinese rings or the the rabbit from the head in the imagination, um, he's the complete opposite. Think about Marilyn Manson that meets David Copperfield in <laughs> one person, and that's Dan Sperry <laughs> that does crazy stuff. You have to think, we were in Dubai, and some of the material he usually does in stage was prohibited, wow. because he could go in jail if he was doing it on, on the stage of Dubai. Wow. Um, one of the guys who's on the show who I absolutely adore, I first saw him in Vegas, is Kevin James. I mean, what a rare act this is. And and if he doesn't make you go, oh, my God, how did he do it? Nothing will. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's, I think, one of my favorites because uh, he's a, a really a creative mind, an inventor of um, magic. And uh, actually, David Copperfield himself uh, had some uh, illusions. Uh, taught from Kevin James so um, he's great because he can uh, create the shocking moment in, this, in the Illusionist show where he cuts in the house a man with a chainsaw with no boxes with no covers live and a second later he is able to create this poetic moment and romantic moment with a little girl where with a paper napkin he creates um, paper rose and make the rose levitate between the little girl hands and then in a flash the paper rose change into a real flower wow amazing I, I just love magic and I'm so thrilled to be coming to see this show because I know I'm going to love it. Um, what I always think when I watch you guys, though, is the investment both in time and money that you put into it to get your act on stage. It's not cheap and it's not easy, is it? Because you've got to wow the audience now. Standing there, as you say, with a cane and a top hat ain't going to cut it anymore. Right. Well, I think every performing delusion is dedicated all his life in it. Uh, um you know, the the manipulator spend his whole time on practicing and practicing hours a day with his hands on cards or billiard balls to manipulate. To the other side, the big illusionist spent uh, years to create the illusion of making a, a big thing disappear. Or like me, the scapologist, uh, I spent uh, my life, last 10 years on to learn how to pick locks and handcuffs uh, to know the mechanism, how they work, and to know how my body works in a, a strange condition like underwater or upside down. And I have to ask you the question then, Andrew, how sexy is it being an illusionist on tour? Are the ladies into this? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Well, um, I feel we all feel like, like rock stars in this show because the size of the show is something that uh, has never happened before uh, on Earth. I mean, we do arenas that only uh, mu famous music stars does. And um, in my case, I, I almost walk naked on stage because I have to do down the water escape. So um, maybe women are more into this. Yeah, I, I need to talk to you about that because I like things called sandwiches and food and McDonald's. There must be a lot of pressure on you not to become a fatty. Well, uh, first of all, I need to be in perfect physical shape for the physic uh, stunt I'm doing. Uh, I spent, uh, I have three moments in the show and the main one is the challenge of the Houdini water tortoise cell where I hang upside down inside a water tank and have to stay there for three, sometimes four minutes, holding my breath. And uh, I have to be uh, perfect uh, in, uh, in my diet, in my training, in my uh, mind control uh, training. So it's, you know, I have to dedicate my life on this. I cannot do mistakes. Mm. And just on the physicality of what you do, are you spending your whole day in between talking to idiots like me, holding your breath? I mean, I guess it's a muscle, is it? It's something that you have to train and something that over many, many years gets better and better and better. And if you stopped, it would all finish and the act would be gone. Yes, absolutely. I have to keep training and uh, every day between the tight uh, free time I have, I keep practicing and learning and learning because... Uh, as much as you give to your art, the more the art will give to you. So, Just to give you the dates in the UK, Bournemouth on September 24th, Oxford 25th, at Blackpool Opera House on the 27th, 28th and 29th you're in Edinburgh at the Festival Theatre, 30th you're coming to Dundee Caird Hall, uh, 2nd and 3rd uh, you're in Nottingham at the Royal Concert Hall, 4th and 5th at Manchester, 6th at Sheffield. I'm going to see you in Nottingham, I'm really looking forward to it, and thank you for sparing the time to talk to me. Um, I'm so glad you're doing this because I still think there's a massive place for magic in show business. And for a while, certainly in Britain, it's been invisible. There's really only Paul Daniels left. And that's a shame because this is a an art and a skill um, that people still love. And the kids especially will be blown away by it. Yes. Um, in this show, you will see that uh, magic is for all ages, for everybody. Uh, the kids can have great fun of the show the grandparents can have it too there is a moment for everybody because uh, all the different performers uh, has something completely different from each other so you can get the mentalist reading your mind so the adults will be blown away but uh, to the other side there is the trickster that is very funny and does comedy magic and kids will love it so um, it's the best of the best in a unique show 4th and 5th of October, you're in Manchester. 6th in Sheffield City Hall. 8th, you go to Wolverhampton to the Civic Hall. 9th, you're at the Plymouth uh, Pavilion. 10th of October, you're at Portsmouth Guildhall. And the 11th and 12th, you finish in London at the Hammersmith Apollo. No better venue to finish. Uh, a fabulous tour. Uh, a great bunch of guys together with The Illusionist. The, the best people in the world, really, have come together to put on this incredible magic spectacular. And congratulations to you for being on it and to the producers for taking a risk with it because I'm sure, you know, in this day of money, it's not cheap to get you guys on the road and you've all got big things haven't you it's not as if you can walk around with a suitcase <laughs> no no at all i mean we have uh, uh things uh cargoes on uh, planes that uh, uh, bring the um, the props around and uh, the production is massive uh, just my water tank that contains a thousand liters of water and uh, with all the equipment it's amazing the production is amazing is that water warm or is it freezing cold? Well, it depends, uh, it depends where we are. Uh, here, uh, I, when I arrived uh, two days ago from uh, Italy, actually before Dubai, it was very hot in Dubai, hottest month during the year. And uh, I came here and I, I felt freezing <laughs> and it's not the coldest moment yet. <laughs> so I'm very curious to see how my water cell will feel in the theatre. <laughs> well, good luck with that one.